This is the notes for 12.6. We're looking at radical equations. So chapter 12, we dealt with square roots the entire chapter, and now we're going to work with them in equations. So we start with the square root of 2x plus 9 equals 6. The first step, and you may uh, forget about this one, so you may want to highlight that one, is to isolate the radical. And I wrote to make sure the radical is all by itself on one side of the equation. And in this particular equation, it is. The square root's all by itself. So then the, what to ask yourself is, is this is kind of a mess right now. What will undo a square root? And squaring undoes a square root. So you're going to square both sides. Notice I put both. So I'm going to move this down. No, I'm not. There we go. So you see I squared both sides. When I square both sides, that undoes the square root on one side and squares the 6. So again, make sure you're doing it to both sides. Once you do that, you're just going to solve. And you guys know how to solve it from there. It's just kind of that additional piece. The last part is that you're going to need to check. And I did the check by just plugging in the 13.5 in for x in the original equation and said, okay, if I plug that back in, will I get 6 like I wanted to? And in this case, I do. This is going to be a very important piece as we move through the more challenging problems. Okay, for this one, before I let you go on this one, what I'd like to ask you to do is to please make sure. Let's let me help you with this one because this one involves that first step of making sure you isolate the square root first. So the first thing I did was I added eight to both sides. Do not square it first. You have to get the absolute value alone first. So I added eight to both sides. Then I followed through with squaring both sides and then I did the check. Okay. So I would like you to try the other three problems. So push pause now. Please work through these three problems and then come back and check your answers. Okay. So I'll reveal the answers to these. This one the variable or the square root was already by itself, so I squared both sides and I solved. You can see I checked. Again, push pause because I'm going to move through the answers pretty quickly. In this one, the first thing I checked is, is the square root by itself? It is. So the first thing I did was square both sides. I solved and I checked. In the first one, in the next one, I'm going to talk about this one a little bit because I needed to get the square root alone first. And you can see I subtracted 32 from both sides. Now, some of you right away are going to say, wait a second, this isn't good. Um, because square roots cannot equal a negative number. So some of you are going to catch right here and say, wait, this is no solution. There's no way I can plug in an x and get take the square root of it and then get negative 25. But let's say you didn't. Let's say you didn't see that right there. And you went forward and you squared both sides and you got 625. What I want to show you is that even if you went through and squared both sides, when you go to check it, you're, you're going to see it doesn't work. And so your final answer for this question should be no solution. Again, you may catch that here, or when you check it, you'll catch it there. So there's two places you could catch it. But the answer to the final answer to this problem is no solution. In the next problems, they're going to get a little more challenging. We're going to have a little more stuff to do. So you're going to get the x alone first. Or I'm sorry, the square root alone. So I added three to both sides. Then I squared both sides. So that's not any different than we did before. Please remember that you do not distribute this. This is not x squared plus 9. If you do not believe me, do x plus 3 times x plus 3 in our area models. Trust me, it's not x squared plus 9. It's x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, I said, wait a second, I've got a quadratic. So I got it equal to 0. Then you're going to use the quadratic formula. We've done quadratic formula enough right now that I don't think you need me to show you. Um, but as you work through the quadratic formula, you can do that now. You will see the discriminant, I believe, is negative 11. Um, can't have a negative discriminant. So your final answer for this problem is no solution. 
in this problem, again, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. and i got to get that square root alone first. Then I'm going to divide everything by negative 1 because you really got to make sure, or you can multiply it by negative 1, that that square root is by itself. Okay, once it's by itself, I'm going to square both sides. When I square both sides, and again, this is not 4x squared plus 25. Do your area model with negative 2x plus 5, negative 2x plus 5, if you're not sure what it is. Luckily, I did all the work for you. So when you multiply that out, you get to here. I see a quadratic. I don't really want to delete it. I'll talk through it. So I got it to equal 0. So at this place right here, I got it equal to 0. Then I used the quadratic formula. When I did the quadratic formula, I got two answers, which isn't shocking. All of you probably knew that was going to happen. But I need you to look at what happens when I check it. When I check 1.46, so I plugged 1.46 in for this x and for this x, when I plug that in, I got the same answer. It's a rounding, so you might be a smidge off, but I mean, they're right on. So yes, 1.46 does work for this. That makes the left side and right side equal to each other. Now check with 4.29, okay? Evaluate that you get extremely different answers when you do this. I mean, this is going to be almost 9, and this is going to be, let's see, like under 2. These are very different. This does not work, and that's why I have this check in there that you have to check. you got two answers for x, but only one of them works. So your final answer is going to be 1.46. Don't put both of these answers down. Only put the one that made the two sides true. 1.46 is the final answer. Do not use 4.29. And with these, only one's going to work. So you have to figure out which one it is. So as I switch the si slide, I would like you to try these two on your own. Please remember you need to get the absolute or the square root by itself first. Okay, so push pause, try these on your own, come back and check your answer. All right, so right here, I subtracted 4 from both sides to get the, uh, ugh, the square root by itself. I squared both sides. That got me to here. I added 2 to both sides, and I solved. Then I made sure to check, just in case this was one of those extraneous solutions, one that comes up but doesn't actually work. That one did work, so my final answer is x equals 6. in this problem. Step one here, I subtracted 6 from both sides to get the square root by itself. Then I squared both sides. I got to here, because square root of 3x, quantity squared is 3x. This is multiplied out. I said, oh, this is a quadratic. I got to make it equal 0. So I subtracted 3 from both sides, 3x from both sides. When I get to here, um, you can definitely solve it by quadratic formula. I chose to solve it by factoring because the factors of 36 weren't too bad for me to explore. But if you did quadratic formula, it's fine. Um, when I solved this by factoring, I got 12 and 3. And then I went to check. So I plugged 12 in for x. And then I plugged 3 in for x. And again, you can take your time to evaluate that. Only 12 works. The 3 does not make the two sides equal, which is what you're really finding when you find x. So your final answer is 12. Don't say 12 and 3. It's only 12. So if you have all these problems down in your notes, that's all you need to do for today.